As humans, we make countless decisions every day. From choosing what to wear in the morning to deciding what to eat for dinner, our decision-making abilities are constantly at work. However, have you ever stopped to think about the role emotions and biases play in the decisions we make? Emotions can have a significant impact on our decision-making process. When we feel happy, we may be more likely to make impulsive decisions or take risks. On the other hand, when we feel anxious or stressed, we may be more cautious and make decisions that prioritize safety over other factors. Biases can also influence our decisions. These biases can stem from our personal experiences, beliefs, and cultural backgrounds. For example, confirmation bias occurs when we seek out information that confirms our existing beliefs and ignore information that contradicts them. This can lead to poor decision-making, as we may not be considering all available information. It's important to recognize the impact emotions and biases have on our decision-making abilities. By acknowledging and addressing these factors, we can make more informed and objective decisions. It's also important to seek out diverse perspectives and information to ensure we are considering all angles of a situation. Overall, the role of emotions and biases in human decision-making is significant. By understanding how these factors influence our decisions, we can make more informed and objective choices. Have you ever made a decision that you later regretted? Or perhaps you found yourself in a situation where you made a decision that turned out to be irrational or illogical. If you have, then you may have fallen victim to cognitive biases. Cognitive biases are errors in thinking that can lead to flawed decision-making. They are mental shortcuts that our brains use to process information quickly, but they can also lead to mistakes and poor judgments. These biases can be caused by a variety of factors, such as our emotions, past experiences, or social influences. There are many different types of cognitive biases, but some common ones include confirmation bias, where we seek out information that confirms our existing beliefs and ignore contradictory evidence, and the availability heuristic, where we make judgments based on readily available information, rather than a more comprehensive analysis. The impact of cognitive biases on decision-making can be significant. They can lead us to make poor choices, miss out on opportunities, and even harm ourselves or others. For example, a doctor who is influenced by the availability heuristic may misdiagnose a patient based on a recent high-profile case, rather than conducting a thorough examination. Recognizing cognitive biases can be difficult, because they are often unconscious and automatic. However, by learning about them and practicing mindfulness, we can become more aware of our own biases and take steps to mitigate their effects. This can involve seeking out diverse perspectives, questioning our assumptions, and being open to changing our minds. In conclusion, cognitive biases are a natural part of the human thought process, but they can also lead to poor decision-making. By becoming more aware of our biases and taking steps to overcome them, we can make more informed and rational decisions. Have you ever found yourself making a quick decision without really thinking it through? That's where heuristics come into play. Heuristics are mental shortcuts that our brains use to make decisions quickly and efficiently. They're like rules of thumb that we apply to situations based on our past experiences and knowledge. Heuristics can be incredibly helpful in decision-making because they allow us to make decisions quickly and efficiently. However, they can also lead to errors in judgment and decision-making because they rely on assumptions and biases that may not always be accurate. One common heuristic is the availability heuristic, which is when we make judgments based on how easily we can recall similar examples or information. For example, if we hear about a plane crash on the news, we may start to believe that flying is more dangerous than driving, even though statistically, driving is actually more dangerous. Another common heuristic is the representativeness heuristic, which is when we make judgments based on how closely something or someone fits our mental image or stereotype of a particular category. For example, if we see someone wearing a suit and carrying a briefcase, we may assume that they are a successful business person, even though they could just be dressed up for a job interview. It's important to be aware of these heuristics and how they can influence our decision-making. By recognizing them, we can try to overcome our biases and make more informed decisions. Additionally, it's important to gather as much information as possible before making a decision, so we can make the most accurate judgment possible. Overall, heuristics play a significant role in our decision-making processes. They can be both helpful and harmful, depending on the situation. 
By understanding them and being aware of their limitations, we can make better decisions in our everyday lives. When it comes to decision-making, there are various models and frameworks that individuals and organizations follow to make informed and effective decisions. These models are designed to help people consider different factors and perspectives, weigh the pros and cons, and ultimately arrive at a decision that aligns with their goals and values. One of the most popular decision-making models is the rational decision-making model. This model involves a structured and systematic approach where individuals identify the problem, gather relevant information, identify various alternatives, evaluate the alternatives based on criteria, and choose the best alternative. This model is often used in business and management contexts where decisions need to be made based on data and analysis. Another model that is widely used is the behavioral decision-making model. This model takes into account the cognitive biases and heuristics that individuals have, which can impact their decision-making. This model recognizes that people are not always rational and that emotions, past experiences, and social factors can influence decisions. This model is often used in psychology and behavioral economics research. The political decision-making model is another model that is often used in organizations where there are multiple stakeholders with different interests and power dynamics. This model recognizes that decisions are often influenced by political factors such as alliances, coalitions, and negotiations. This model is often used in government and nonprofit organizations. Other decision-making models include the incremental decision-making model, which involves making small decisions over time, the garbage can model, which involves making decisions in a chaotic and unpredictable environment, and the intuitive decision-making model which involves relying on gut instincts and intuition. Overall, understanding different decision-making models and their applications can help individuals and organizations make better decisions by considering different factors and perspectives. It's important to choose the model that aligns with your goals and values and to be aware of the limitations and biases that may impact your decision-making. Making decisions is a fundamental part of our lives. From deciding what to eat for breakfast to where to invest our money, we make countless decisions every day. However, not all decisions are created equal, and some have more significant consequences than others. It is essential to develop effective strategies for making decisions in different life domains to ensure we make the best choices possible. One strategy for improving decision-making is to gather as much information as possible. When faced with a decision, it is crucial to research and collect all relevant information. This can include talking to experts, reading articles or books, and conducting online research. By gathering all the information we need, we can make informed decisions that are more likely to lead to positive outcomes. Another strategy is to consider the potential outcomes of each option. By weighing the pros and cons of each choice, we can see the potential benefits and drawbacks of each decision. This can help us make more informed decisions that are aligned with our goals and values. In addition to gathering information and considering potential outcomes, it is also essential to trust our instincts. Sometimes our gut feelings can be our most valuable asset when making decisions. By tuning into our intuition and listening to our inner voice, we can make decisions that are aligned with our authentic selves. Finally, it is crucial to seek feedback from others. Getting feedback from trusted friends, family, or mentors can help us gain valuable insights and perspectives that we may not have considered before. By seeking feedback, we can make more informed decisions that are more likely to lead to positive outcomes. In conclusion, improving decision-making requires a combination of strategies, including gathering information, considering potential outcomes, trusting our instincts, and seeking feedback from others. By using these strategies, we can make more informed decisions that are aligned with our goals and values, leading to more positive outcomes in different life domains.